Hi, this is Martin for Revelation Software and welcome to another video series looking at Revelation Software's Open Insight Toolkit. In this mini-series we're going to be looking at extending the clinic application that we built in the desktop tutorial series um, and that's going to be using Open Insight for the web or what we refer to as O4W for short. O4W is a Web2 web application platform that runs on the Ajax paradigm. It supports templates, tabs and a lot more besides. User maintenance is built in and it also features data encryption and you can also use the main desktop Open Insight tools in conjunction with the O4W design tools so you can be moving uh, between the two because obviously there are uh, benefits to, to both of those tool sets and we'll probably have a look at those during this series of videos. However, best of all, O4W is one of the easiest tools to use to create database-driven online solutions. In fact, it's so easy that we will create the whole of the clinic application in O4W. So that means menus, data entry forms with QBF, reports, etc. When I first started to plan this tutorial series, I was planning on web enabling just one form, like we did in the original tutorial some years ago. However, once I started getting into O4W, I realized just how easy it is to build web applications. So much so, I've managed to create a fully working web version of the Clinic system without having to write any code whatsoever. And it's that system that we're going to be looking at over this series of videos. Now, Whilst we're going to concentrate on O4W during this series, there are other web technologies or ways of getting to the web within Open Insight that you can use. For instance, you could use Xrev DLL or one of the other web enabling technologies within Open Insight. Now that gives developers ultimate control, but it also means that there is an awful lot of additional work that needs to be undertaken. Or on the flip side, if you go into the forms designer you can use the HTML publishing option so that's very simple if we go to uh, let's take our app our appointments window and if I do a file and save as and I'll save this as mp underscore HTML and when you're using this interface it usually likes to have the controls one under the other so we'll just quickly move these around a little bit drop this one down here I'm not going to worry too much about where these controls are going this is uh, just a very 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 quick crude example and then on here we're going to need to drop on a couple of buttons we'll just call this one submit and this one will be read and if we just go into the quick events for those buttons there are a number of internet um, quick events here and the one I want is the submit so this is to um, write from the HTML form so we'll just OK that, OK that and then we've also got the read so if we go back and we pick the uh, read into the HTML form so OK that So, and then if we go file HTML publishing that brings up the HTML publisher window and we can very quickly make sure that we've got our form and our application that we want compile the HTML page and we'll just save that to the desktop and we'll just call this mphtml so we'll save that we can then view the HTML page and if I come down to that one and if we just open that with notepad I haven't got my registry set up to actually run this form uh, but you can see that it gives you some basic HTML with all your input tags etc and you can just simply copy and paste this into your HTML uh, publishing tool uh, might be Expression Web or it might be Dreamweaver or you might even just do it in Notepad whatever you like to create your HTML in you just copy this in put your template around it, your buttons etc and that's a very crude way of getting onto the web there's, there's no encryption, there's no security in there but that is getting Open Insight data onto the web in its simplest form. So let's just come out of here. Uh, now I don't want to save my changes. 
and if I go to the application I've been writing in O4W, when you run up O4W, this is the initial screen that you get. So what we'll do is we'll just log in. The username I'm using is simply O4W for the moment. That's the, uh, the default. So we'll log in to the application. And if I then run my menu, menu we're going to run is this one so run that and then we're actually into our application so I've got my data entry forms with a full working menu so I can go into patients and then I can search in the surname town postcode add a new record or I can just hit the search button and then that will bring me up a list of all of the uh, people in this database so I'll just go ahead and choose number 21 here and you can see that I've got my patient information, so the name, the age, date of birth, the address, and I've even got the image of that particular individual, any comments, and also consultations. And if I was to click on 10, and then I can see the details of that particular appointment, so it's opened up that record, so David Moran's, and I can see the appointment date, time, etc., all in here also got a number of reports I just got the patient listing report here so 22 rows yes I want to view that report and then you can see the reports come back and if I want to um, I could have these so I could click and then drill down further and we might look at doing some of that over the course of these videos so it gives you a rough idea of what we're building and all of that's been created using no code within O for W. Now, once you've downloaded the Open Insights evaluation software and you've installed that using the Quick Start Guide, the first thing that you'll want to do is to navigate to wherever you've installed your copy of Open Insights. If you use the default, it would be Revsoft slash OInsight, I think. Um, I just have mine under Revsoft. So if we just open up that, then in here you've got the documents number of very useful documents in here but there are two that we are interested in at this precise moment in time now the two are these here which is the 921 reference guide now the 921 reference guide includes the quick start guide with a bit more detail in it but it also documents the O4W API so although everything that we're going to be doing in this tutorial series is going to be without using code, those of you that are professional developers, you can drop into using the API and create all of the business logic that will then run on the web server and give even more value to your systems. I'm not quite that clever. So what we're going to do is we'll just have a look at the quick start guide. And this is the document that you're really going to want to pull down and work with. Now, I don't actually follow this in its entirety during this uh, video series because remember, we're converting our clinic application, whereas this is looking at the examples application. But one of the things that this guide does brilliantly is runs through the configuration of O4W on your system, and you really should follow this very slowly and very carefully. It uh, identifies the browser compatibility, so you need to make sure that you're running the right browser. Um, and then once you've got that, you then need to set up IIS for your web server. IIS is the one that's documented within this particular tutorial. There's then a section on setting up O4W to run on XP. And then after that, there is also a section for configuring IAS for Vista and Windows 7. Now I'm running on Windows 7 here. There's a little bit more to setting it up on Windows 7, but if you follow the guide slowly and carefully, then I can assure you it, it works and it doesn't take too many minutes. If you find at the end of it, when you run localhost example start and it doesn't work, then just go back through the quick start guide. Um, we get quite a lot of calls from people saying, I've run through and it doesn't work. And then when we go through it with them slowly and carefully, we find that a registry setting is not quite right or one of the zappy bits and pieces is not quite right. So this is a great, great um, tutorial uh, to help you to set up your system. It also looks at configuring OECGI3 on your system. 
and you really want to be making sure that you're using OECGI 3 rather than OECGI or OECGI 2. Now the reason for this is OECGI was the initial um, CGI engine that we had and it would be a persistent connection so all the requests would come in and they would just be queued and handled one at a time. We then released OECGI 2 which enabled you to have persistent and dynamic so you could have your persistent one connection queuing or you could have dynamic where you would launch an engine per request up to the number of engines or licenses that you had available. After that basically nothing happened. With OECGI 3 you get the best of both worlds because you can have dynamic engines which means you can spawn um, processes up to the number of licenses that you've got you can handle that number of web transactions um, and then over and above that it will then queue them and run each one in turn so make sure that you're using OECGI 3 and in this example examples is um, noted in here I've used these exact same settings in my system let's just bring it up here so I've got um, examples which is where I started and I've also then got one for our clinic application so you'll need to make sure if you're going to follow this video series that you have clinic set up in the registry under OECGI 3 and that you have those settings that you can see on the screen there so the default is value not set application name of clinic file mode 2 file path c colon backslash temp multiple servers is zero my password is empty if you've got a password in your application you'll need to put that in there the procedure name that we're going to call which is run underscore oecgi underscore request I'm working against server port 8088 um, if yours is different you'll need to set that accordingly and the server URL for me is localhost because I'm just running this all locally shutdown flags is one and startup flags is one sysdown page we're not using so that's just blank and then of course the username for our application so my username is clinic in this particular instance now the other thing that I've gone ahead and done is to create a shortcut and very simply the shortcut is C program files Mozilla Firefox so I'm running up Firefox and then I'm passing it in HTTP localhost clinic being the application start.htm so I'm going to be running up using Firefox and I'm going to load up the clinic application with the start page that makes life a lot easier so let's just run that up now and so long as everything's configured correctly you should get the welcome to revelation software's OI for web toolkit screen now I'm running with the 9.2.1 version so the O for W web toolkit is version 1.1 and then just to test that everything is running you should then be able to log in to your application using O for W and O for W and then you'll get to this welcome screen again so long as you've logged in and you don't get any gateway error messages or anything like that then we're good to go okay that's it for this particular lesson in the next one we'll start looking at building the menu I'll catch you very soon thanks for your time today bye bye